Well, it finally happened, dear viewer. The shill media finally grew a spine and turned against their corporate overlords yesterday with an explosive new article from Variety titled simply, Crisis at Marvel. And really, I think crisis is probably the best word to describe their current situation. After a string of box office flops and underperformers, coupled with an endless sludge pipe of forgettable Disney Plus shows that fewer and fewer people watch or care about, it really feels like all of their past mistakes, problems and flaws have reached critical mass in the past few months, and now there's just no hiding from it anymore. The article covers a lot of ground at great length, so I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but it does touch on all of the major issues facing the MCU right now, with a shocking amount of honesty. There's no real attempt to sugarcoat it or sweep the problems under the rug anymore. This is a straight up laundry list of all of Kevin Feige's biggest headaches. And damn man, judging by the size of that head, he must have quite a few going on. <laughs> Headache number one is Kang, specifically the actor playing him. As the article itself says, the most pressing issue to be discussed at the retreat was what to do about Jonathan Majors, the actor that's been poised to carry the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but instead is headed to a high profile trial in New York later this month on domestic violence charges. The actor insists that he's the victim, but the damage to his reputation and the chance he could lose the case has forced Marvel to reconsider its plans to center the next phase of its interlocking slate of sequels, spin-offs and series around Major's villainous character, Kang the Conqueror. The thing the author doesn't seem to understand though is that it honestly doesn't matter what happens to Jonathan Majors. Whether he's found guilty or innocent isn't going to change the fact that Kang is a fundamentally shit villain, both in concept and execution, and Marvel completely fumbled his introduction anyway. The first time he showed up was in a Disney Plus show that not many people watched or cared about. He was killed off after a single episode, and then he got his ass kicked by Ant-Man of all people in his first movie. The fact that there's an infinite number of him out there in the multiverse Verse removes any sense of stakes or investment in the guy because ultimately, every variant of him is just another disposable stooge that can be replaced at a moment's notice. The human mind isn't really designed to think of characters and conflicts in infinite multiversal terms, and because there's no centralised definitive version to focus on, he's not even a character so much as a force of nature. It's like a hero trying to fight a tidal wave, it doesn't have any emotional resonance because there's no personal connection between them. Like, remember when Cap and Iron Man fought each other in Civil War, and even though it was basically just two guys going at it and the fate of the entire universe wasn't at stake, it still meant a lot because we as an audience knew and understood where both men were coming from. That was nice, I liked that. And I think even Marvel have begun to realise the problem they've created for themselves. Marvel is truly fucked with the whole Kang angle, and they haven't had an opportunity to rewrite it until very recently, but I don't see a path to how they can move forward with him. Neither do I, top dealmaker guy, and I don't think Marvel do either. It's a perfect example of raising the stakes until they've become so ludicrously, unfathomably high that they basically leave their own audience behind. Then there's the Marvels. <laughs> I mean shit man, you don't need me or Variety to tell you how this one's shaping up. It's a movie about a bunch of characters nobody cares about, played by a bunch of actresses nobody particularly likes, doing a thing nobody understands while fighting a villain that nobody's ever heard of. Not exactly a winning formula. Directed by Nia DaCosta, The Marvels unites Larson's heroine with two superpowered allies, Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan. But instead of seamlessly building on the success of Captain Marvel, this movie resulted in four four weeks of reshoots to bring coherence to a tangled storyline. Then eyebrows were raised again when Da Costa began working on another film while the Marvels was still in post-production. The filmmaker moved to London earlier this year to begin prepping for her Tessa Thompson drama, Hedda. Sounds like a fucking blast. If you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few months to go. Even the most committed Marvel shills seem to be mysteriously silent on this one. It's like they know what's coming. It's a fray! Another problem of their own making is content oversaturation and the corresponding decline in quality. It really began to bite during the pandemic when they started churning out shows onto Disney Plus and never really let up. The constant pace of development on so many different projects at the same time spread their talent and resources too thin, and well, the result was obvious. Almost everything looks and feels rushed, unfinished and shit now because, basically, it is. 
The so-called bad VFX we see was because of half-baked scripts. That's not Victoria, that's Kevin, and even above Kevin. Those issues should be addressed in pre-production. The timeline's not allowing the Marvel executives to sit with the material. The Marvel machine was pumping out a lot of content. Did it get to the point where there was just too much and they were burning out people on superheroes? It's possible. The more you do, the tougher it is to maintain quality. Damn, the article even mentions the disastrous Blade movie, a project that's now gone through at least five different writers, two directors, and ended up being shut down completely just six weeks before production was due to start. One person familiar with the script permutations says the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade was relegated to the fourth leads. <laughs> Oh my goodness, imagine my shock that a Marvel movie with a male lead would push him into the background in favour of a female-centric story that preaches moral lessons to the audience. Put a chick in it, make her gay! I believe I asked you to put a chick in this and make her gay. Put a chick in it and make it fucking gay as fuck. You know, it's actually kind of funny to see mainstream outlets finally wake up to this shit. Yeah, people like me have been saying this for years now, and their points are so in line with my own, it almost makes you wonder if they've been taking a few notes, but whatever. Better late than never, I guess. I think even Marvel are starting to grasp the full magnitude of the disaster they've created themselves, and now they're scrambling to fix it. I mean, it's probably too little too late, but at least they're trying. The Troubled Blade movie now has a whole new writing team and a vastly reduced budget, which is probably for the best. The days of billion dollar box office hauls are long behind you and they ain't coming back. Daredevil was scrapped halfway through filming because it was so shit that even Marvel weren't prepared to release it, and this is coming from the company that thought She-Hulk was good enough for public consumption. You know I'm the hottest, you ain't never gotta heat me up, I'm pretty- oh, <laughs> There's even rumours that shows like Ironheart might be on the chopping block, because really, who exactly wants or needs to see a cheap derivative knockoff of the most popular hero in the entire MCU? Speaking of which, the article leaves the best for last with this little revelation about their upcoming plans. You know how I made a video recently about modern movies being shit because nobody can ever stay dead? Well... Sources say there's been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. This would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, both of whom were killed off in Endgame. Fuck. You know, Mahler and I have actually joked about this exact thing on Open Bar multiple times, and both of us agreed that the moment they decided to bring back the original Avengers, that was the sign that the MCU was officially fucked. It's the final desperate move of a studio that's completely out of creative ideas and can't think of any other way to generate even a shred of interest. And the thing is, I suspect it wouldn't even be worth it even if they tried it. Not only would it cost an absolute fortune to bring back actors like Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson, both of whom are getting older and don't seem all that excited to step in front of the volume screen again, but it also wouldn't generate the kind of excitement they're hoping for. Yeah, there's still a few Marvel stands out there that would whoop and clap like mindless seals at the return of a few legacy characters, probably the same people who shit their pants over a few seconds of a plastic looking Hayden Christensen in Ahsoka, but most normal people would see it for exactly what it is, a desperate gimmick, a final Hail Mary to try to shake people out of their apathy towards this franchise. And apathy is the key word here. Apathy is the final stage of franchise death. There was a time when even I was invested enough in the MCU that I actually cared about how it was being mismanaged. I got pissed off at seeing my favourite characters get slowly tarnished or replaced by inferior copies. But now I can't even summon up any kind of emotion about it, and I suspect a lot of other people feel the same. Times have changed and they've moved on to other things now. What used to be a cultural event that had everyone talking and speculating and debating about what might come next, and eagerly awaiting the next instalment, has slowly become a faintly embarrassing relic of a different time, like watching your drunken dad trying to dance to Beyonce at a wedding. Dated and unfashionable and out of touch with its own audience. Unable or unwilling to adapt to a change in market. And you know what? I've got no sympathy for them because they pretty much brought this on themselves. They had the world at their feet back in 2019 and if they'd just taken a moment to catch their breath and plan their next move properly, they probably could have had another 10 years of successful movies. But their greed, hubris and growing obsession with THE the message. Instead of good storytelling, undid it in just a few short years. 
They were the architects of their own downfall, and now there's no hiding from it any longer. The MCU is dead, and Marvel killed it. And yet, the one thing I keep asking myself about this article is, why now? Why release such a devastating expose on Marvel right after that infamous South Park episode poking fun at Kathleen Kennedy? Could there possibly be a connection between the two? It almost feels like a little bit of intentional misdirection, shifting the focus from one failing Disney studio head to another. Almost as if someone in a position of power and influence doesn't want us talking about Kennedy, her numerous failures at Lucasfilm and her public humiliation at the hands of Parker and Stone. But hey, I'm sure this is all just a total coincidence. Right? Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.